Good morning. good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is so good to have you both here, and for those that are joining us online, we welcome you this morning. Um, announcements to go over this morning. We'll just talk about uh, one. Pastor Yu is not here. You may have noticed. Um, he's a bit under the weather, um, so keep him in your prayers, if you would. Christmas Eve service tonight, it's 7 o'clock here, uh, should be a great service, so if you're available, please come and hang out with us, we'll be here at 7 o'clock. Um, coming up in the life of the church, any other announcements? No choir. Does anybody else have any announcements this morning? Just a reminder, we do have a microphone again, so when we come to our time of praises and prayers, if you would... Um, Raise your hand and one of us will get the microphone to you. It just helps um, not only here, and especially for Pastor Yu to hear and understand um, the prayer request, but also for those online. So if you say them from your seat without the microphone, the people online can't hear. Um, so if you would raise your hand and pause and we will get the microphone to you as best we can. This one seems to be working great. So we're very blessed to have some new technology in the church this morning. Any other announcements? No. Seeing none, um, we will go to our Advent candle lighting. Today is the fourth Advent Sunday. The scripture reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and evermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. On this day, we light this candle as a symbol of love that Jesus brings. May the gift of love in Jesus be shared among us and beyond us. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Thank you. Will you please stand with me as we open with surely the presence of the Lord is in this place, found on page 328 or on the screen. Please join me in this morning's call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. So great God, the light. O sing to the Lord a new song. God's salvation is at hand. Celebrate the coming of salvation. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. Celebrate the coming of Christ. Will you please pray with me? God of light and love, shine upon us today and in the year ahead. Guide us out of darkness and into your joyous light. May our lives reflect your glorious love, that others may see your Christmas spirit in us each and every day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning's opening hymn is Good Christian Friends Rejoice, found on page 224 and also on the screen.
You may be seated. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 2, and I'll read verses 1 through 7. Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. We've come to that time in our service where we share our joys and share our concerns with one another. Um, One that I'll lift up as you're thinking about what you have. I would just ask you to pray for um, Scott and Stacy Riley. Um, Scott's brother, Kurt, um, found out just after Thanksgiving, wasn't feeling good, found out that he had um, cancer and they thought that cancer was somewhat contained, but tests this past week show that the cancer is throughout his entire body. It is everywhere. He's just with it. So if you would keep the Riley family in your prayers, um, and especially Kurt, as he's dealing with this, they would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Any other? Yes, Betty. I think we need to keep Bethlehem in our prayers as they're they had to cancel the services over there because of the war. Most definitely. Just prayer requests for all those that are traveling uh, during this holiday season. And I'll remind you to keep Pastor Yu and his family in your prayers as they're working through sickness in their household. Greatly appreciate that. Any other joys or concerns this morning? I'm going to share a joy because you guys sound beautiful. <laughs> you all don't get this perspective all the time, um, but your voices sound extra beautiful this morning, so thank you. All right. Seeing none others, will you... Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we pause this morning, as we take a deep breath, as we wrap up the Advent season, this time of preparation, um, God, our hearts and our minds um, can somewhat be scattered or scurried um, as last-minute preparations for Christmas are here. God, we just pray for peace. Um, In the past four weeks, we've talked about love and joy and peace and hope. And God, we just pray for that this morning, that deep down inside, each of us will feel that in a new way. Um, God, some prayer requests have come, um, especially when there's a time of war and, and battles, and we just pray for the Holy Land and all that's going on there, all those that are involved. God, we pray for peace. We pray for peace in the hearts of your people. Um, in this sanctuary, there are a few things that have been brought up, but there's a whole lot of things that we we uh, keep to ourselves. And so, God, we pray for those, um, those prayers that uh, were unspoken this morning. And God, you know our hearts and you know our needs. We just pray for those um, that are suffering from loss, um, that don't have a particular family member that they have had in years past at this Christmas celebration. God, we just pray for those who are are feeling lonely. Um, We pray for the Riley family as they deal with this diagnosis of cancer and for Scott's brother, um, for his family as they uh, journey on these next steps for the doctors that are working with him. God, we just pray for wisdom and guidance as they work to treat him. God, there's so many people who are out and about um, 
going to family and, and traveling here and there. And God, we just pray for traveling mercies for all of those who will be on the roads and in the air. Um, just help them to get to their destinations safely. We pray for Pastor Yu, especially this morning, um, who longs to be here, um, but his body's just not letting him. We just pray that he will heal, heal quickly, um, help him know that he is loved and how much we appreciate him here. And we're just that, so thankful for you bringing him into our lives. God, we just thank you. We thank you for loving us and showing us in so many ways how blessed we are. Uh, hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Choir, will you please share with us this morning? Our second scripture reading this morning uh, continues in the book of Luke, chapter 2. I stopped at 7 last time. I will read Luke 2, 8 through 20 this time. Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. This may sound familiar. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Will you please join us in our hymn, What Child Is This?, found on page 219. In Pastor Yu's absence, Lyndon has offered um, to read his message this morning. So I will give it over to you. <laughs> I had no better transition. I'm sorry. I should. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lyndon Ramsey. No, no. A blessing in um, Pastor Yu's pre- Pastor Yu presenting us with his written version of his sermon is that we do have it in hand that while he's not here, we can, I will do my best to relay what his message would be to you this morning. And he entitles it, Glory to God, Peace on Earth. Celebrating the birth of baby Jesus, we rejoice together and welcome his coming upon us and adore him who was born in the world as our Lord and Savior. 
Today, we will share with you the birth narrative of baby Jesus that Luke delivers. In Luke chapter 1, he has already kindled hope that the day of Israel's salvation has dawned through the song of Mary and the birth of John the Baptist. Now in chapter 2, Luke lets us know how Jesus was born, and he also begins to develop the meaning of this birth and this Jewish child for the whole world. Luke begins the story of Jesus' birth with the decree of the Roman Emperor Augustus to register at his own town. Augustus is the honorific, I love that word, honorific, divine-sounding title that Luke uses for Octavian, whose tenure as Caesar stretched from 27 BCE until his death in 14 CE. I do the math on that one. The name Augustus, which means honorable man, was named by the Roman Seminate House. At that time, Rome was called a nation in which the sun does not go down, indicating that the Roman Empire's territory was so wide and extended. Augustus issues an edict that calls for a universal census. Even though the purpose of the census is not described, we assume that it might be for efficient tax collection and military draft. I get a thumbs up from the tax man. So every person had to go to their own native hometown. His imperial order leads Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. Mary is pregnant, which is the fulfillment of God's promise. Caesar orders, and the parents of Jesus do what is required. The distance from Galilee to Jerusalem is about 90 miles, and it is said that a donkey can make about 20 miles a day. Given the rugged terrain, it will probably take four to five days. Yet on foot, it might take at least 10 days. They weren't both riding the donkey, so probably closer to that 10 days. The road to Bethlehem was crowded with lots of people, animals, and the necessities needed for travel. To Mary and Joseph, the travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem must have been a very long and hard journey because she's pregnant on a donkey. I'll add my own things into this. <laughs> it is notable that they were heading to Bethlehem, and this was interesting. Bethlehem is the house of bread, a small village about 2,000 to 3,000 people. And it's amazing that Jesus, the bread of life, is born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. About 700 years before, the prophet Micah already prophesied that Jesus will be born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. It says, though you are Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. And that comes from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. When Joseph and Mary arrived at Bethlehem, Mary realized that the time had come for the baby to be, born, to be born. Luke records that the time had come when they arrived at Bethlehem, and it's notable that the time had come also recalls the birth of John in chapter 157, wherein it says, when it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby. The same phrase appears again at the circumcision of Jesus and at his presentation in the temple. It also reminds us of Galatians 4.4, 4, declaring that Jesus was born in God's time. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law. Here we recognize that when the time had come, Jesus was born for the people who waited for the Messiah. Luke narrates the birth of Jesus in a single verse. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him up in cloths and laid him in a manger, since there was no place for them in the room where guests stayed. It is notable that Jesus was laid down in a manger because there was no room for him. It is known that Jews had waited for Messiah like King David, who can deliver them out of Roman oppressions. However, Jesus came on earth as a most humble feature. He was born in a manger. 
It's a great irony that Jesus was born in a manger since there was no room for him. At the journal, as the journal guidepost, um, Willis Perling wrote a story um, that he had experienced in his youth. In a Christmas drama, he took a role as the host of the inn. At the scene, the, the Joseph and Mary pleaded badly for a room to stay for the birth of the baby. He was so moved and forgot that he himself was acting in the drama. He said, if you need a room so badly, please use my room. I can stay at any place for several days. The teacher, the director of the drama, was so upset that he made the drama stop. Yet, it's said that the audience clapped at the scene and rejoiced. I bet that many of us may have the same kind of heart. Please use my room. This makes us reflect whether there is room for Jesus within us. There, Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son, wrapped him in cloth and placed him in the major. The cloth bands exhibit the mother's nurture of her child, as is fitting even for royalty, as found in Ezekiel 16.4. However, it was not easy to imagine that the manger became Jesus' first bed. The baby Jesus, who is the savior of the world, was born in a manger and placed in a feed trough. This detail emphasizes the humble origins of Jesus. At the same time, it may foreshadow the failure of humanity to receive the Lord. The Bible continuously indicates that God had no recognition of the coming of the Messiah. Jesus delivers the coming of Jesus this way. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. That's from John chapter 1, verses 9 through 12. Christmas is to receive Savior Jesus, believe him, and rejoice in him. Even though baby Jesus was wrapped in claws and laid in a manger, Luke describes the scenery when Jesus was born in a calm and beautiful way. As Jesus was born, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. The moon was brightening and countless stars were twinkling in the night sky. It must have been a beautiful, peaceful night. Silent night. Holy night. Then the angel appeared to the shepherds who were watching over their flocks and said to them, Do not be afraid. I will bring you great news of great joy that will be for all the people. It's notable that that catchphrase, do not be afraid, was already declared in Zechariah, the father of J John Baptist, and Mary. The angel tells the shepherds to transform their fear into great joy. Here we hear the message of Christmas from the angel. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. The message that the angel said to the shepherds is good news for us all. This verse, which consists of only 12 words, includes three Christological titles revealing the identity and significance of Jesus. He is Savior and is Christ, also Lord. Joy and salvation belong to the whole people. The birth of Jesus is good news of great joy for all people. But it begins with this group of shepherds living on the margins of society. They are the perfect candidates to hear good news about a child in a manger and to respond in praise of God. In the same way, the birth of a baby is to be good news of great joy for those who respond in faith and gratitude. As we celebrate the birth of baby Jesus, let us look at a baby who was wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. He came to us in a lonely manner and in a humble way, but he came to save us and guide us into the path of peace and the way of salvation. He is our Lord and Savior. At the birth of baby Jesus, the angel declared, glory to God in the highest places and peace on earth among persons whom God favors. 
the birth of Jesus declares glory to God and peace on earth. It's notable that peace is to come to persons whom God favors. Glory to God, peace on earth. Pastor Yu remembers that every time he would celebrate Christmas at his home church, they put up a hanging banner with glory to God, peace on earth. It was in large print at the front of the church building. And since then, that catchphrase, glory to God and peace on earth, has been inscribed on his heart. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Now we live in a world where we sincerely need peace. We have witnessed violence and wars in the world, so we long for peace. We pray for those who suffer. Through the message of Christmas, Luke lets us know that the gift of peace would then come to human beings who order their lives in a way that welcomes it. Jesus lets us know about things that make for peace. It's notable that Luke repeatedly delivers the message about peace. The Lord will guide our feet in the path of peace. A great company of the heavenly hosts praise God, declaring glory to God and on earth peace to persons whom God favors. On Palm Sunday, the whole crowd of disciples praised God in loud voices, declaring peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The risen Christ said to his disciples, peace be with you. As we celebrate Christmas, the birth of baby Jesus, our Savior, Christ the Lord, we would like to share a Christmas, I will share a Christmas prayer written by Robert Louis Stevenson, which opens our hearts to greet the birth of the baby Jesus and guides us to live Christ-like life with joyful spirit, welcoming heart, and caring love. Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by every greeting, which Christ brings, and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children, and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven, in Jesus' sake. Amen. Dear friends, Jesus Christ is the most valuable gift that God sent us. Today, celebrating the birth of baby Jesus, let us look at a baby who was wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. He came to us lowly and humbly, but to save us and guide us into the path of peace and salvation. He is our Savior, as our Lord and Christ. As we celebrate the birth of baby Jesus, our Savior, let us keep the song that the angels sang at the birth of the baby within us always. Glory to God in the highest places, and peace on earth among persons whom God favors. I pray that God fills us all with love and peace, coming from our Savior Jesus at this blessed Christmas and throughout the coming new year. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you. As our attention is, is focused on the greatest gift um, ever given, God's Son, Jesus, we come to the time in our worship service um, where we present our gifts, our tithes and offerings uh, this morning. Um, I just want to thank you on behalf of the church for giving generously to the church, um, for supporting the ministries that happen here, um, both financially and, and with your presence and with your time and efforts and energies as we come to the close of a year. Um, it takes a lot to make church happen, and we are so thankful that we have such wonderful, giving, loving, caring people um, here with us. And so we just want to thank you for that. Um, thank you for um, giving from your heart, and thank you for um, continuing to ask God how he can use you um, to use what you've been blessed with. 
um, time, effort, energy, money um, towards continuing the life of the church. So as our hearts and minds are focused there, um, let's prepare for our tithes and offerings. Please join with me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Dear God, we cannot thank you enough for the gift of your Son. Through your grace, you have given us everything, including our very lives. On this day, we celebrate the miracle of Christmas. But when the candles are blown out, when the ringing of the bells has ceased, when the angels and shepherds have gone home, May we continue to shine your light into the world through the giving of these offerings. And so we offer you yet another gift, our partnership to build your reign here on earth. Amen. Will you please join us in our closing hymn, Lift High the Cross, found on 159 and on the screen. As we welcome and adore baby Jesus, who was born in a manger, and our Lord and Savior, the Almighty God bless you with divine grace. Christ give you the joys of everlasting life, and the Holy Spirit fill you with peace and love, now and forever. Amen. Amen.